Welcome to Women of the Week. Now, I'm not gonna give a descriptive story or um, a personal story this, when this happened because I'm sure something like this would happen to every single one of you. Um, you're having some sort of misunderstanding with a friend and you look back at your text messages, you look back at your emails and you see that you really are right, okay? And you like, you wanna just like take a screenshot and show them, oh, you know, this is why I said that, right? Um, or let's, you know, maybe if you're bigger than that, you can just like, you could just, you know, not say anything and let it go. But um, what if it involves like your boss and your coworkers, or it's in front of a lot of people on a group text message and you're kind of getting thrown under the bus and you look back and you see, you know, you have it in proof through text message or through your emails that you really are right. And you want to sort of um, protect your name, right? So you have that to balance against the fact that you don't want to like embarrass the other person and make it like really obvious that they're the ones that messed up. So we're going to talk about that today. And um, I think we're going to learn a lot from our woman of the week, Tamar. Now the story of Tamar and Yehuda is very complex, very big, very hard to um, talk about in a short little segment. So I'm going to try to give like a brief summary so that everyone's on the same page and has the background to understand. But um, please, if it present, if it, if it piques your interest and, and gives you a lot of questions, then I invite you to please study it in more depth. Um, Tamar was married to Yehuda's son. Yehuda's the, Yaakov, Yehuda's the son of Yaakov, and Tamar was married to his son. And his son died without any children, and therefore Yehuda gave her his second son to marry. This son also died without having any children. So now Tamar wants to marry Yehuda's third son, and that would be what Yehuda should do. But Yehuda's a little concerned, like maybe this isn't a good idea because my first two sons died. I don't know that I want my third son to marry you. So he kind of stalls and he's like pushing it off. Now, the reality is that his first two sons died for their sins, not because of Tamar. Tamar was a righteous woman, but um, he didn't know that and he was a little nervous to give over his third son to Yehuda. To, to Tamar. So he starts like stalling a little bit and Tamar realizes what's going on. And she decides to take matters into her own hands and to claim what's rightfully hers, which is um, to be married into Yehuda's family and to have a child from Yehuda's family. Um, so she dresses up as a harlot and she actually um, gets Yehuda to sleep with her. She, she sits in a place where he's gonna pass by and he doesn't recognize her at all. He thinks that she's a prostitute, um, her face is covered, and he and he's gonna be with her. And um, she asks as sort of as compensation, as a collateral, he's gonna pay her later, but for right now, can he can she please have his staff, his ring, his cloak? So he gives her these three items as collateral for, for the payment. And they're together, and when they're done, they leave their separate ways, and Yehuda still does not know that this woman was his daughter-in-law, Tamar. And what happens next is that Tamar becomes pregnant and a few months later, she's showing and people start talking. Could you believe this? Tamar's, you know, Yehuda's daughter-in-law, Tamar, is pregnant. She must, have been, she must have been promiscuous and people are talking and people go over to Yehuda and they say, did you hear what happened? Your daughter-in-law is promiscuous. Um, and Yehuda, you know, immediately says, that's terrible. She should, she should die. We should burn her. That's a penalty of death um, to act this way. And that's what they intend to do. And Tamar se sends him a message and she sends him the, the collateral items, the staff, the ring, and the cloak. And she says, to whomever this belongs, that's who got me pregnant. I'm pregnant with the, with, from, from whoever these items belong to. And Yehuda immediately recognizes that these are his items and he understands what she did and why she did it and that she that she wanted to take what was rightfully hers. And um, he says, publicly admits, Sadka many. she is more righteous than me. She is right that these items are from me. This is my, my doing. And he takes ownership of it and publicly um, announces it. And obviously that's a very big embarrassment. He's this prestigious leader. It was, it was you know, an embarrassing thing, but he took that and he admitted that. Now, um, Rashi points out what an incredible thing Tamar did. 
if you know the Rashi points out that first of all, it's not like she um, announced to everyone, "Look, these were Yehuda's items all along. It's really him that did this." Um, rather, she leaves it open for Yehuda to decide if he's going to admit, for Yehuda to de decide if he's going to publicly acknowledge and let, let her um, re reclaim her name. So we see an incredible lesson here that um, Rashi quotes the Gemara that learns from what Tamar did um, and, and says, Noach lo la'adam she'yipol atzmo l'kivsan ha'esh ve'al yalbin p'nei chavero b'rabim. It's, um, it's from the Gemara in Sota. That it's better for a person that he should throw himself into a fiery furnace, which is what Tamar's punishment was going to be, than to embarrass another person. Embarrassment is compared to killing someone. Like when you embarrass them, it's, it's, their face gets all white, like, like they lose the blood from their face and it's compared to killing. And, and just like we wouldn't kill someone, um, we'd rather die than kill someone. So that comparison is that we'd rather die than, than embarrass someone, shame them publicly. And um, I think that we're living in a society that does the opposite. We, it's so easy for us to and people do this all the time in social media to shame people, shame people that they don't even know. Take videos um, and then post them on platforms that everyone's gonna see this random lady in the airport that's doing something embarrassing and then, you know, it goes viral. Um, so this is quite the opposite. So this is Tamar was willing to literally, besides, besides have her reputation destroyed, she was literally willing to go into a fiery furnace um, rather than embarrass the leader Yehuda. And um, bringing this back to our personal lives, when we are in that situation, when we have that um, situation where we want to redeem ourselves, um, we have that perfect text to prove it, that we were right all along, um, I think this message from Tamar is a really strong one um, that will help us make the right decision on how we're going to do that. So sometimes I think we could really just let it go. We really don't have to prove that we were right all along. It really doesn't matter. And then there are other times where, let's say our job is somewhat on the line, or we really do have negative repercussions that could come from it. Um, we wanna say face in front of a, a large group of people, whatever the situation is. Let's take a lesson from Tamar and do it with the utmost sensitivity that we can. Let's work our hardest on not embarrassing other people, um, not shaming anyone, and if we, need to, if we really do need to redeem ourselves and clear our names, do it in a private way. Um, do it in a way that's respectful, that will maintain the other people's dignity 100%. Let me know how it goes. I'd love to hear from you.